hello, hello, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls. What Bever does, what Bever do, 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 do. They were giving Alabama, like Alabama was just this, 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 and Alabama didn't, have, didn't you know, lose their two stars. Did not show up that day, Dude, or was it? You want you to say systematically? It's offense, more like, I know it's just more of a passing. Hey, who knows? It might have been, might have not been. You know, who knows? But then again, that's what I call it football. I mean, Oh, man, that's definitely going on the blooper reel. Hey, you do that voice, I think of uh, Norbert. I think of Norbert. <laughs> oh, my God. We have a dandelion encrusted rib. Hello, ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls. What it do, what it do, what it do, and how are you? Welcome Welcome, welcome to this week's edition, season two, episode nine of This Week in SEC Football. I am Mr. Fingers live from Zagnus Central. And that fella right over there, the brother from another, the sexy mother Hubbard, the ace of base in the place, in your face, in his face. You put it in your face, right? What are you doing? It's a halftime. It's your favorite part of the game. My man, the myth, Colin P. What's up, man? Hey, man, you missed, you missed uh, Colin P. from the DMV. I, you know what it, it <laughs> we 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 suffered a few technical difficulties this evening as you can see we had yeah. lost all of our bells and whistles on our thing here we go get that all squared away but we appreciate you guys tuning in to watch us tonight uh so what's going on with you man not much man just chilling and happy father's day to you my friend hope you had a happy. good week there Happy Father's Day to you as well, my friend. Uh, much appreciated. So, what did you and uh, what did you and the fam get into? Oh uh, yeah, my folks came up this weekend, and uh, uh, it was basically yes, uh, yes, was Saturday. It was a boys' day out. Me and my father and uh, my son went out to see the new uh, Jurassic Park movie. It was actually really, really good. My son's really into Jurassic Park, and uh, he had a blast. So we had a good, uh, good day Saturday. And other than that, we just hung out with the fam and you know, and enjoyed the you know enjoyed the Sunday and you know enjoyed the weekend. How about yourself? Oh man, um, it was decreed that I had to sit still, and you know I like to do yard work on the weekends, and oh, yeah. uh, it was decreed I had to sit still. And I mean, I couldn't do anything. So, you know, your boy was kind of fidgeting around the house, but uh, the missus made a nice big, lockdown, breakfast, huh? nice big <laughs> breakfast, nice big breakfast. The missus made waffles and bacon and cheese grits, my friend, Ooh. cheese grits. Uh, and then, uh, later on that evening, um, she made it. Oh, I didn't post. I didn't, I didn't even post it. She made, uh, ribs and, uh, bacon, cheddar, potato soup. And, uh, we ate and we ate ourselves stupid. And then we sat down and we watched a couple comedy specials. Uh, by the way, uh, shout out, uh, uh, uh no endorsement shout out. We not getting anything for this, but, uh, there's a new Netflix special. Snoop Dogg got a special out. It's got Cat Williams, Melanie Camacho, D. Ray Davis, Mike Epps, uh, Guy Tory, and there's one other person that I'm missing. But it was absolutely hilarious. It's a good lineup, man. And, and that devil, she fixing all that food. She was definitely trying to get you to sit on your behind. That's <laughs> where you couldn't move. I, I didn't have no choice, man. I just got to sit out. I sat out on the patio and listened to the and you know. I, you know, it's amazing the things that you can find when you you sit down in uh and uh out on the back patio. I, I was yeah. like, oh man, we got owls and coyotes. <laughs> Bro, man, I've got a zoo in my house. I mean, you, I don't know if you saw on Facebook where I had that raccoon. I was I was in the living room and I heard this kind of ruckus out in my, on my deck, and I kind of opened the blinds there, opened the curtain, and there was a there was a trash panda sitting right there looking at me. He was going through my garbage. Yeah, and, we uh, um. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was saying I've got. I mean, we got. Chip, I got chipmunks in my backyard. Rabbit families of rabbits around here. It's like you know, just a, a zoo around here. It's nice to sit outside. You know, sometimes and just enjoy nature. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Um, well, there's directly behind our fence line. Mm -hmm. um, they're building a new subdivision, but they designated some area that they're going to keep like wooded for right. the animals is going to be kind of like a little mini you know kind of preserve the wildlife deal 
So there's yeah. coyotes back there. There's mm-hmm. rabbits. Uh, the rabbits come around about every other year. The coyotes were gone for a little bit. Yeah. Um, anytime a police call, anytime an emergency vehicle comes through, you can hear them coyotes. They start out. Oh yeah, you hear them talking. So, yeah. So um, I basically I ate breakfast. I sat out on the back patio and chilled for a little bit. Uh, I, I did run out and get some uh, Ben and Jerry's uh, chocolate chip cookie dough for dessert. You got to build the uh, in there. <laughs> yeah. So so it was nice and relaxing. Uh, uh, Sean called my oldest. Uh, my oldest called me. I talked to my pops. Um, uh, my uh, twenty soon to be twenty five year old. He likes to call me on my birthday because, you know, fathers, it's always Father's Day and then my birthday is later on that week. Yeah. He always calls me on my birthday because he's got this whole thing where it's like, I don't want to call you twice in the week. I just don't call you once. <laughs> so, yeah. He'll probably call me Thursday. He'll probably call me on Thursday. Uh, uh, your boy's about to blow out 52 candles soon, man. Bro, I mean, I've been knowing you for a while. And and, and I'm going to tell you, your, your boy's about to blow out 46 of them. Can you believe that? We getting up there, man. And um, B man is gonna be twelve. B man is gonna be twelve, and it's just like it seems like the other day he was just born. So I'm like, man, right? Time, time dude. keep on slipping, dude. I remember when you. I remember you know when when you and his mom got married and everything, man. It's oh, like yeah. yo. So, uh, up, time keep time flies, bro. When me and you, when me and you met uh, this up under here, both of us had a lot more color in this part right here. Very true. Very true. Uh, I'm, I'm looking like Santa, and then, then B Man's quick to tell me, he's like, "Why is why is why is the hair on your face so so white?" And I was like, "Well, it, it's a little bit gray. Well, it's white. I can't lie. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's definitely why. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie about it." <laughs> I got. I've gotten to the point where the guys are calling me Unk at the Seven Eleven. I'm like, "What's up, Unk? My bad, Unk. I didn't mean to bump into you." I'm like, "Unk." Bro, I'm like, I'm truth. I mean, I, I told the people, and I and I still do the, you know, the Southern manners. It's like, "Yes, sir." You know, "No, ma'am." "Yes, ma'am." "No, sir." "Yes, sir." And I'm like, yeah. wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I'm the yes sir, no sir, yes. Yeah, I'm like, wait a minute. That, that doesn't seem right that I'm that old <laughs> to be yeah. to be called that. Somebody called me yesterday. You know, what I'm saying yes sir to me. I'm like, wait a minute. Anyway, yeah, and uh, I'm glad you had a week, a good weekend, man. Uh, with the family, yeah. Everything. Yeah, you, I like that. You I like that shirt, bro. Really enjoy that time off, my brother. You're busy, yeah. man. I like that shirt, man. Are we oh, yeah. That? oh yeah. That's it nice. There. That's like, nice there. Well, just to commemorate the championship of the dogs in the in this uh past january's college football championships i actually have one also if you can see it says we did what they couldn't got the dog on the front uh i forgot what it says on the back i think it says let's see if i can get it in the camera i don't know i don't want to mess it up can you see it yeah this weekend sec football his says colin p mine says uh mr fingers the oklahoma dog you can get those right now if you want one. Those of you that are UGA fans right there, tinyurl.com, ZA Podcast, back, uh, backslash ZA Podcast merch. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Oh, Mama got me a, a nice little um, a Bluetooth speaker. It's a Bose because I've gotten to the point we we sleep with fans on. It's, I don't know if that's a Georgia thing or whatever. She's got one on her side of the bed. I got one on my side of the bed, so I can't hear with the fans going, my alarm going off. Yeah. So um, I turned, you know, put on the Bluetooth speaker, then you can hear the alarm going off, right? So she got yeah. me that. And then Yaz got me a pull up bar because I had one, but we moved out here and the doors are wider. So the one I got, I have to use for push up bar because it doesn't fit on the yes. doors. Oh, that's nice. Uh, and then Junior brought me by. Uh, Oh wait a minute! Hold on a second. Let me let me show you what Junior got me. Hang on. Talk to the people until I get back. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> so Junior came by today. He couldn't come by yesterday because of work, and. Uh, you know, you know, your boy is a huge, huge, huge fan of that group from Philadelphia. Oh yeah, and uh, oh, Junior, got some vinyl action. There you go. Junior dropped yeah. that off with me in the vinyl, um, and it's a limited yeah. edition exclusive. It's a two LP set in translucent purple. 
So it's legacy. Oh, this is, I mean, what what tracks? I mean, like this is it like uh, how many tracks is that? You said two LPs. It's great. It's the greatest hits collect. Great boys to make greatest hits collection. 10, 16 tracks, starting with the first album, Coolie High Harmony. It's got Motown Philly, Hard to Say Goodbye to Yesterday, and it's got End of the Road, Still in the Night, Hey Lover, I'll Make Love to You on Bended Knee, Water Runs Dry, One Sweet Day, Doing Just Fine, Four Seasons of Loneliness, A Song for Mama, and uh, Pass You By. Like, fun, this is- fun fact, fun fact, my senior song was on Bended Knee. Oh, word? Yes, sir. Your I, senior song. Y'all get ready to graduate. Y'all get ready to graduate. Wait, let me fi- let me find out. Y'all, y'all are so y'all are such angsty teenagers. Your graduation senior song was a breakup song. <laughs> there was a mar- that wasn't a breakup song. I thought it was a marriage song. Like I was trying to, you know, it, you know, we got to swoon the ladies, man. <laughs> well, it was, uh, it, was, it, was, it, was it was kind of sort of a breakup song. It was like, yeah, stuff is going sour. Let's get back to how we used to be. Basically, he's saying, I'm sorry. Yeah, pretty much. Oh man, look, I gotta change the crawl. I gotta change the crawl at the bottom of the screen, man. Look at me. I'm 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 hurting. I had to crawl at the bottom, was talking to got the dates on there for celebrate Fairfax. Which, by the way, those of you in the DMV, if you have not heard, yours truly will be returning to the DMV uh August the 18th to host the celebrate for his the very the very for me, the very last um finals of the celebrate fairfax karaoke championships that'll take place friday august 19th from 5 p.m to 9 p.m at the park at tyson's corner uh so if uh, those of you that are watching from the dmv come get at your boy we're gonna have a good time i'm gonna uh, see you but no i didn't get all that kind of presents but i got this i put it on my key ring so he gave me a little card with this well he's 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 12 he hasn't gotten to that point yet like i like my big thing is i'm I, I, I like I like presents, but I, I don't have to get them anymore. No, yeah. Like like the missus got me the Traeger last year, year before, and that was I was like, yo, like I'm like, yeah. you, you know. So um, you know, I'm when you, get old, when you get older, you're like, how much that cost? <laughs> you know, I'm telling you, you know, I mean, thank you, thank you, but how much, how much that sent us back? <laughs> and the big thing, then the big thing for me be just because my birthday and Father's Day run so close together. So, right, all right. you know, I've got I've got kids. I got a, I got a kid with a birthday this week. Uh, I got a kid with a birthday on Thursday. I got another kid with a birthday coming up in July. I got another one with a birthday in September, uh, August. Yeah, Lord, man, you space them out a little bit. A little bit. More. I well, I did. <laughs> that's the that's the that's the funny part. Like, like. Like the two oldest are sixteen months apart, but the oldest was born in February. The second one was born in June, and then the daughter was born in July, and the youngest one was born in August. So, bang, 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 <laughs> literally. But, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> pun intended. He he said without a without a hint of tongue in cheek. He said so. <laughs> Anyway, we appreciate you guys for stopping by today and watching this week in SEC football season two, episode nine. I am your guy, Mr. Fingers. That is Colin P. We want to thank our sponsor, DJG Enterprises, for always being a part of this madness that we call uh, this madness that we call Zagnif Productions' greatest hits. We come in here every week. You want engraved tumblers? They got it. You want custom made Afghans? They got it. What we're showing here. They do specialize in Greek letter organization gear, but they can get you something. If you got a picture you want to put on an Afghan, they can do that for you. Visit www.greekgans.com today. Thank you for being the sponsor of this week in SEC football. So what I wanted to do this week, uh, those of you that are watching, hey, thank you for stopping by. I see Mr. Sean Spencer's in the in the room. Uh, a couple of my coworkers were watching. One of my old classmates. Um uh ash from uh sunday with the swintons mrs swinton's pop quiz they're in here watching uh they've got a great show you want to check them out part of the let's talk football family of sports podcast sean uh good lord sean has got let's talk football he's on sunday mornings with the swintons he's got washington football weekly boy they got a lot to talk about right now uh yeah. what is the, the other shows that he does um uh, there's let's talk football. So let's talk football. The ladies take over is let's talk basketball. They're working on a baseball program. Hopefully everything, uh, winds up. Why are you in the comments telling me what's up? I'm talking to you right now. Are no, you hollering back at Sean? Sean, 
<laughs> okay, my bad. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what? that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> that's not how any of this works. I, I can see us doing the whole rest of the show. Colin is just answering my questions in the comment section. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you're talking about Sean. We got to talk about Sean. To do, uh, talking about the tickets to, uh, we're not going to get off, off track there, but uh, the Falcons playing the uh, Commanders up here in November. We got to check out. Like, I'm trying to get you over here. Uh, so all three of us can go to the game. Go see if Falcons play the uh, the commanders. All right, so, Sean, you on the hook to get them tickets, bro? All right, look, hey, look, the, the way things are going right now, you probably can get them for. The, I'm sorry, Sean, I love you, bro, <laughs> but I know what I know what's going. We know everybody that knows what's going on in professional football. Uh, the commanders are going through it right now, and their owner is at the at the root of the issue. Um, with the congressional uh oversight committee and uh uh the owner dan snyder just decided he's jumping on his yacht and sailing in the international waters like i ain't coming back <laughs> you can't make me so anyway hey kate what's going on thank you for stopping by dear heart we got a lot of our L uh let's talk football folks in here so uh let's go ahead and jump right on off into it what colin and i have decided to do is that we are going to now that there are under 70 days, actually, until SEC football kicks off. Uh, believe it or not, the first game of the season is not uh, the classic in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Vanderbilt will be playing on August 27th. So there are 68, count them, 68 days until SEC football kicks off. So what we're going to do is each week we're going to do a rundown, a, a rundown of each team, uh, what news they have going on, um, now we don't have a lot of reports from training camp basically er you know how training camp is everybody looks good everybody looks like yeah we're going to repeat rah rah sis boom ba uh right now no injuries uh but there has been some news in the last few days regarding uh the team that we're going over right now that being of course us being georgia fans why wouldn't we start with the university of georgia bulldogs the reigning national champions go dog sick and roof, roof, roof. uh actually my shirt you can't see it because, of course, I'm smart and I got these bright lights in here and it's all washed out. But uh, there's a weekly tradition. There's a tradition at home games where Larry, where they have a montage of of UGA big plays over the years that is narrated by the late, great Larry Munson, uh, the beloved radio announcer who announced games every Saturday near far and wide. Uh, and he has a narrative that he speaks of. And part of it says there is no tradition worthy of such envy there is no institution worthy of such loyalty as a university of georgia so on the front it says there's no tradition worthy of such envy on the back it says no institution worthy of such loyalty and of course it's got you know big harry on there so nice. tickets will still be the same but yeah you're right sean because he ain't selling nothing look <laughs> you go someplace else and the french fries is bad french fries about to go bad they'll sell you a they'll give you a whole big old thing for a dollar Dancing. I mean, to nope. be honest, they play the Falcons. I mean, I don't know how many people. I mean, it, uh, we ain't that good either. So I mean, we got that's <laughs> true. But you never, you never can tell by the time that game roll around, they might be on a good roll. So you oh, know, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So we're gonna jump right off into this before we get too far gone here. We're talking about the University of Georgia now. Of course, we know they won the national championship, and we've talked about the 15 players that uh, uh, went off in the NFL draft. Um, they will be missed greatly. We do know that uh i'm expect i'm just gonna say this um i'm gonna say this and i i, I kind of i'm a little bit in lockstep with golden blue dude our our uh, our good friend of the show that georgia's defense is going to take a step back uh and le i mean just based on what we know those guys that got drafted contributed to the defense and we don't know anything about the guys that are coming in to fill the gaps yet yeah, you, 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 said, you, said a mouth, you said a mouthful right there. So, I mean, we, we don't know. You know what I'm saying? And I can I can agree with you. Like, I mean, it, it, it will be a step back. But if I, you know, if I think I know, you know, Kirby, I mean, it's like it's, it is the SEC and it is Georgia. So, I mean, it's next man up. So, I mean, you got to – you kind of think that, you know, Kirby's got the people here that are, that are coming into the, that spot that had been vacated that uh, they, they'll, you know, be able to assume the role that, you know, that the other players had. So, I mean, we don't have any kind of frame of reference. You know what I'm saying? Is everything right. that's all in place right now? But right. I, so, I agree. If, if, we, if it's something happens, it will be a slight setback. I don't foresee like a total fall off. 
on the defense. No, I, I don't see there right. being a drop off. Uh, Will Muschamp was brought in from uh, those of you that are familiar from University of South Carolina. Uh, he is a great defensive minded coach, brother Daniels. Thank you for stopping by. Um, my esteemed fraternity brother, 06. Um, we, uh, we, we, we know that he's a great defensive mind. We don't know that he's as great as Dan Lanning, but he still brings a lot to the table. Um, he's got experience. I mean, he's been, where's he been? He's been Florida. He's been, uh, where else has he been? Was it South Alabama? Uh, I believe so. I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Gosh, it's gotten, to the po- it's gotten to the point where at some point in time, everybody in the SEC will be part of of the Nick Saban coaching tree, just because even if they weren't under Nick, the head coach that they're under came from Nick. So, right. yeah. So, uh, but most notably the, uh, the head coach at South Carolina of the Gamecocks uh, prior to uh, Shane Beamer. Uh, of course he was let go. Beamer was brought in, had a good, had a really good first season, um, had a really good first season. I'm expecting big things out of them. We'll get into South Carolina a little bit later. Uh, so let's 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 go ahead and jump into uh, the news. Actually, you know what I want to do? Here's what I want to do. I want to get to your part first. So Colin hits me up before, right before the show. He's like, hey, dude, did you see the story that broke? Uh, did you see the story that broke uh, that, uh, about your boy Lane Kiffin? And I said, <laughs> oh, God, what did Lane do? What did Lane do now? For those of you that remember last season, they were like, uh, hey, Lane, how do you feel about this game? He's like, yeah, you know, we come out here to do what we're going to do. Takes his headphones off, chucks them, and says, get your popcorn ready. Right. And then they proceed to go out on the field and get um, uh, slightly embarrassed. But it made for a great sound bite that everybody used all season. And he embraced it, giving out popcorn to the first 250 fans at uh, whatever the name <laughs> is. What's the yeah. stadium where Ole Miss play? Uh, where Ole Miss play? Rebel Stadium. That's what I'm going to call it. Um uh, but uh, your boy Lane Kiffin is at it again. So tell us a little something about this man. Well, I mean, basically, it was a it was a tweet that he sent out last year. I guess it was. It was a uh, like a meme somebody had put transposed a uh, uh, a picture of uh, <clears throat> a guy with uh, Nick Saban's head and then holding a baby, and it was Kirby Smart. And uh, so <clears throat> I guess he tweeted. I think it was a couple of days ago. And uh, it was kind of a jab, but not really. And he just said, well, I guess I was responsible for Georgia beating Alabama. You know, and he, he retweeted the tweet he tweeted last year. So, I mean, you know, and, and he's more over now as a comedic person, you know, for college football. I mean, and he relishes in that fact. I mean, it makes for good stories, but, I mean. And then, and also, you know, they it was an article. And I think somebody asked uh, Kirby how he felt about it. And, he, you know, he kind of pushed it off. He's like, he and Lane have a good rapport. And, you know, they're good friends or whatever. And, uh, you know, it, basically he said it didn't really matter because we won a national championship. He said, hey, you know what? You can say what you want to. I said, we got a ring. We got we got the hardware. So say what you want to. You know, basically. True. You know, I mean, what can you, you know, I mean, it rolled right off your back. Because, I mean, what are you going to say? Doesn't matter. Nothing. Ain't nothing you can say. I mean, at nothing. the end of the day. But, you know, but you know, it's just funny that that is resurfacing now with all of the smack talk that's going on with Saban taking pot shots at Jimbo and and Dion and Jimbo and Dion coming back at Nick and Brian Kelly wanting to be the the, the cool coach and doing the, the 360 videos of his players and looking ridiculously awkward and uh, and his fake southern accent hanging and talking about <laughs> my family. Yeah. <laughs> so you know it's just a little something else it kind of reminds me it's getting kind of wwe ish right now you know yeah, like, you, you said that earlier and it made a lot of sense you know like, like the rock like the rock you know like the rock backstage talking to stephanie McMahon. allow the rock to ask you a question do you like pie it doesn't matter what you think you know what i mean that's the whole yeah. but see if you think about it though lane was out of the news for quite some time like he was gone for a minute and I was like, I was quiet. He said a bunch of boom. There you go. And that right there got him talking again. So, yeah. But, to be yeah, honest man. with you, I was surprised at the, the, the amount of stuff that Saban was saying. I mean, I, I get his, I mean, I get his feelings, you know, and all that kind of stuff, you know, the feelings he has and everything. But I, I, I was very surprised that he came out, you know, with both guns blazing, you know, towards A and M, and you know, saying what he said. Well, I mean, let's look at it this way: his legacy is not going to suffer any at all. That's what makes yeah, it more interesting. I mean, most interesting because I mean, why? What's the game? I mean, what does he have well, to gain from doing that? Well, yeah, I don't. I have no idea. But his legacy, out of all the coaches 
that are currently coaching in the Southeastern Conference. Yeah. His legacy, I mean, unless something, unless somebody pulls an R. Kelly and comes up out the closet, closet <laughs> is going to be. Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, his, his his legacy is not going to be tarnished. He is going to go down in history as quite possibly degraded. Well, I don't know because you have that era and you have this era. Yeah. He will go on the he will go on the Tuscaloosa Mount Rushmore of coaches of at Alabama, right yeah. along with Paul Bear Bryant. Uh, yeah. It'll be Bear Bryant. It'll be Bear Bryant, Nick Saban. And Gene Stallings would be on, on there somewhere because he did win a national championship as well. Goes on the Not as dominant, but he still managed to pull we had a conversation with. I mean, I think, in my opinion, he's hit that glass ceiling. I mean, like, honestly, of course you want to win more championships. You want to win more and more and more. But, I mean, honestly, what more can he do as a head football coach? You know what I'm saying? Not, not a whole heck of a lot. The biggest thing for him, the biggest thing for him is now – he did address the elephant in the room, which is the NIL deal. And Mr. Candidate, thank you for joining yeah. one of my coworkers. Um, uh, he did address the white elephant in the room, which is the NIL situation. Sure. Right now, without any regulation, I mean, there was a story I saw yesterday, and I forgot to write the kid's name down. Um, but he's got a $4 million deal waiting on him. I don't know what sport it is he plays. I think it's basketball. Mm-hmm. He's got a four million dollar NIL deal waiting for him right now. That's insane. That means that the minute he walks across the stage and gets his high school diploma conferred upon him, he is instantaneously a millionaire. Instantaneously, not, 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 having, that, not having played a, a a minute of a quarter. Right. Has not played a significant game or anything of that nature. I am all for, I want to say this, I want to go on record as saying I am all for these kids getting uh, getting some sort of financial recompense for their name, for <laughs> their likeness, for their pictures. But I don't, I think that it's just because there's no regulations People are just throwing money at them like it's nothing. Like, here, we want you to come and play for our school. You I understand? Think huge, you, I think it's a huge mistake doing that without them actually playing or having any kind of playing time at all and having them, you know, give it, offer them that type of money, you know, as soon as they, you know, leave high school. I mean, I would have some kind of, you know, I would at least a game or two to see if they were that kind of money. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and Sean, Ray, Sean raised a good question. What's the difference between the NIL? And he asks this question every time we talk about NIL. What's the difference between NIL and what the boosters has done for as far back as we can remember? Um, well, well uh, other than other than the fact that back then it was illegal, not a whole heck of a lot. But, but, uh, but those guys would come and they would play and they would play the faces off and they weren't you know, threatening to not play if they weren't getting paid. They weren't, uh, you know, oh, uh, you know, th- that kind of thing. Um, See, that's another thing you raised. You raised a good point because, I mean, again, all this money, that gives them kind of, you know, the arrogance to say, look, you know, I'm not going to play. You know, I'm getting paid anyway. Why should I you know, put forth the effort? I mean, these kids are, you know, in college, they're playing to get to the next level. That, in my mind, just kind of, you know, yeah. make them not want to, you know, give the hundred and ten percent. Not want to, you know, they're getting paid anyway. Kind of like when you get in the NFL. I mean, you look at Haynes, you know, Haynesworth, you know, you know, um, for the rest of he was laying down, you get a hundred mil. I'm getting paid. I mean, like, you know, depending on the person, if they, you know, love the game of football, I mean, they just looking for the cash or the check, you know. Yeah. Well, let's be real. Let's think about it for a minute. With the money that these guys have historically historically been getting paid for the last several years. OK, because mind you, back in the day, in the early days of the league, these guys would come and play football and then they would have to go back to their regular nine to fives. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, so what these guys are getting paid, if all of a sudden the NFL said, OK, we're regulating this, we're coming up with a pay scale like the like the military, like the United States military has a pay scale. If you're at a certain pay grade mm-hmm. and with a certain number of years, you get paid X number of dollars period, point blank, that's all you get, regardless of qualifications, regardless of whatever, whether you're a supercharger or you're a turd, everybody gets paid the exact same amount of money. The only difference being where you live because you get your, you know, um, 
separate rations and housing allowance based on cost yeah. of living. Right. But yeah, you know, if the NFL did that, do you think these guys would give two wooden nickels about playing yeah. pro football after watching uh, after watching uh, Deshaun Watson get a Three hundred forty million dollar deal guaranteed without ever playing a down in Cleveland. Well, I mean, look at, look at Antonio. I, don't, I don't think they want to play. But uh, but look at Antonio Brown. I mean, like you know, he, he's uh, he's got mountains of talent. But look what happened. You know, what I mean, like he goes in there, you know, he, he walks off the field. So I mean, I don't know. If that's good. Uh, you know, I don't know. It's just it, throwing, the, throwing that amount of money to kids, you know, that young that have you know don't have that kind of. They still have a lot of growing up to do. You know, it's just, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's I agree. Pushing, it's agree. pushing the NFL, you know, I mean, like you said before, you know, college is becoming NFL quick, fast, in a hurry. If it's not already, you know, yeah. So without some, without some sort of regulation, that's going to get way out of control. Uh, but we're going to put a, we're going to wrap, put a little bow on that and wrap that up. We got a couple other, uh, segments that we want to get into in today's thing. Those of you just joining us, if you're just popping by and you're saying, Hey, if you're watching this replay on YouTube later, Give this a like and a subscribe if you're watching us right now on the Facebook feed. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't know if they can share it or not because I think this is on my personal page. But you will be able to share it from YouTube later on. Uh, give it a share. A like and a subscribe helps with the algorithms. We appreciate it. Uh, this week in SEC football, Season 2, Episode 9. Uh, this week we are doing the spotlight. We've decided to do a spotlight on a team from the SEC with each new show. Uh, leading up to the kickoff, the 68 days till kickoff, Vanderbilt takes on, I believe it is Kent State, woot woot, on August 27th. I tried to sound excited Sean, it's like I said before, on August 27th, Vanderbilt is playing Kent State. Watch it if you want to see a football game. That's all I got. <laughs> all right. So moving on to the next topic here, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to try and put a, until we hear something definite, we're gonna try and put it put this one to bed. Finally, we talk about it every week because it's been yeah, the latest most, normally I'm anxious to hear the Wait most on. talked about subjects surrounding University of Georgia football since the since the nat between the national uh between the draft and now is this is Arch Manning coming to Georgia? Where is he going? So supposedly he has whittled his selection down to three schools. And if, you, and if you've been living under a rock, let us feel you in really quickly. His last name is Manning. His uncles are Eli and Peyton. His granddad is Archie. All three were pro football players. And apparently his dad was the best player out of the bunch. And the only reason he didn't play was because he got hurt. So kid plays for a private school in Louisiana. He's breaking all sorts of records. Hey, what's going on, Kyle Yacy? I'm sorry, my brain just reset. I don't know what the heck that was. I just had to have a moment. <laughs> I just had to have a moment to get it out. Uh, Kyle Yacy, fellow uh, fellow Atlanta Falcons fan there. Thank you for joining us, sir. Um, uh, he plays for a private school down in Louisiana, and he's breaking all kinds of records. Uh, he's supposedly the number one prospect in the country, period, by position, whatever. Uh, and right now, the scuttlebutt is where is he going? Supposedly, he's got it narrowed down to – University of Alabama, University of Texas, and the University of Georgia. And uh, a good friend of ours, we do sometimes, we follow a lot of people as well. Uh, shout out to the next guy we about to uh, 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 paraphrase here, Uncle Lou. Uh, also another great uh, a vlog. He is a raging UGA fan, but he talks all sorts of college football. If you want to check him out on YouTube, great place to check him out. Um, so he's got these three places. And uh, folks are saying, folks are saying, oh, he's going to Georgia. Oh, he's going to Alabama. Oh, you know what? This is how we narrow this down. Let's 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 dissect this and look at this. Okay. So, if he goes to Alabama, he's there's Bryce Young there, and Bryce is a Heisman Trophy winner, and Bryce is draft eligible after this season, so he probably will be dipping out. Mm -hmm. However, comma. Because uh, even though Arch was in the running, Arch was looking at Alabama and Alabama was in the running, Alabama, because they found out that he was looking at some other schools, they picked up a four-star 
uh, kid. His name is. Uh, they signed a four star kid. He's, oh God, uh, four star. Uh, Eli Holstein is the guy they got. The four star kid from also from Louisiana. Same class. And, huh? Same class. I mean, like. I don't know if he's. Yeah, yeah, he's a four star. He's actually he he'll be coming in this year. Okay. He'll be coming in this year. Eli Holstein. Yeah, it's commitment on Twitter. He's ranked that number. I don't know what number he's. I think he's like the number four quarterback prospect in the country. But he's okay. a four star. So here's what's going on. Alabama's already got a suitable backup for Bryce Young. So do you go there and do you duke it out? And we know with him being Arch, he's going to want to, his family's going to want to go him to go someplace where he can play right away. So yeah. sit Alabama off to the side. Then you got Georgia. And you and I being Georgia fans, we know exactly what's going on with Georgia and their quarterback room. Georgia's quarterback room has been full since Jimmy Carter was running for president. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not even making that up. That's like right now, good. the quarterback room is full. Stetson Bennett is probably going to be the obvious starter, barring any injury during training camp. Right now, it's looking like Carson Beck is the number two, mm-hmm. and Brock Vandergriff is the number three. Mm-hmm. three yeah. But we also have Gunnar Stockton coming in with this year's class, and he's one of the top ranked quarterbacks in this year's quarterback class. Uh, and he, they're projecting that he will pass Vandergriff on, uh, on on the depth chart, so at least wind up being number three. So mm-hmm. what's going to wind up happening is you'll probably lose Vandergriff, and Carson Beck will be the number two. He'll be the number three. Now look over to Texas. Texas right now does not know who their quarterback is going to be. They've got a decent idea, but they don't know. Um, you know, their quarterback transferred out. Casey Thompson, gone. Uh, kids, kids, a, a, a baller, but he just found himself in it. We talk about it. I'm going to start calling it the uh, the Trevor Lawrence effect. He's a baller, but he found Quinn, U- Quinn Ewers. Oh, thank you, Sean. Appreciate it. It's Quinn Ewers. And Quinn Ewers is a kid, uh, you know, he's questionable. He, he's a little, his status is a little questionable. We'll see what's going to happen. He transferred from Ohio State after, you know, C.J. Stroud stepped up, and Stroud's going to play. Mm. Uh, so, so where are you going to go? Where you? Yeah, exactly. Like Ewers was the kid that uh, Ewers was the kid that uh, that everybody wanted. And um, oh God, now it's all coming back to me. Thank you. Ewers was a kid that everybody wanted. He wound up going to Ohio State, and right. uh, job, job went to job went to C.J. Stroud. And you see what happened there. He was like he, that close. Well, I won't say that close to winning the Big Ten, especially not after the drubbing they took at the hands of Kate's Michigan Wolverines. Yes, Kate, I'm giving you guys a shout out. I'm giving you props. <laughs> Write this down. Mark it at 38 minute mark during this show, episode nine, season two of this week in SEC football. I gave you Wolverines some props. Uh, CJ Stroud wound up getting that job, so Ewers transferred to Texas. So Ewers is probably going to wind up being the guy at the starting position, but, but he's also, uh, you know, he's also, this is also going to be his second year. So Mm -hmm. where does he have the best opportunity to start out of those three schools while he's in college? University of Texas. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I get what you're saying. I mean, but at the same point you, you hit the, uh, you hit on the point earlier, his name is, his last name is Manning. So, I mean, you know, what kind of leverage does that hold? I mean, like, you know, I've, I've actually been, I've been I'll say it for you a lot. Yeah. I mean, I've been in different, uh, different, uh, you know, groups, Georgia group, whatever. And, you know, I heard people say, you know, will Kirby start him? I have no doubt. I mean, I have, I mean, well, I, I should hold, hold that thought for a minute, please, sir. I got to address the white elephant in the room. Sean Spencer, if you don't stop it right now, you're trying to stir something up. The only time that your boy, Unc Shea Shea and his boy, Mr. Fangus, had any problem with the Michigan, with the Wolverines of Michigan, go blue, maize and blue, or may, blue and maize, or whatever it is, how they go together. <laughs> the only time I had a problem with them was when they was playing them dogs. Because you know what? We could be friends on Friday, but you're going to get it on Saturday. That's what my grandmama told me. You can be friends on Friday, but you're going to get it on Saturday. Then after Saturday, the game over, we shake hands, we all go to Club Shea Shea and do something for two something. So don't you start, Mr. Spencer. 
Mm-mm-mm. And that was only because you was egging me on. Now, what you got? Anyway, <laughs> go ahead, brother. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, you do it. I mean, like I'm just saying, I'm, I'm agreeing with you, but I'm saying, you know, that name holds a lot of weight. So I'm saying we saw what happened when, you know, in NFL when, you know, Eli you know, was going to go to the Chargers and, you know, Phillip Rivers was going to go to the Giants and, and uh, you know, uh, our Big R said, uh-uh, you know, I mean, you know, and switch it up. So, I mean, what? who's to say that, you know, he goes any of those other schools that don't have a slot ready for him to slide into that he wouldn't start. You know what I mean? I mean, mm-hmm. I know that, the, that typically he would have to earn that spot. I'm not saying he can't. So maybe he goes in there and, you know, shows behind and, you know, he just beats them all. But the comfortable spot, like you said, the comfortable place to go would be Texas because he wouldn't have to, he wouldn't have to compete. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't have to compete for that job. Well, then again, would, I mean, you, you're still talking about him and another number one prospect. Well, I mean, hasn't, hasn't he would compete, but yet. what kind of compact caliber players would he be competing against is what I'm saying. Well, you know, you're look Despite their despite their problems that they've had uh, in past seasons, it is still University of Texas. They do still know how to recruit. I just don't think they have the coaching staff there to get those guys together. Is what I'm looking at. Yeah, um, okay. but yeah, I, I mean, I think what they're going to wind I, what what they're going. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. What they're going to wind up doing is they're going to make a big dog and pony show out of the quarterback uh, quarterback competition, yeah. and yeah. they might let each of them. They might do something really goofy, like have one start. Had the other one play the second half, and it turns out to be a blowout because I think they've got a cupcake in their season opener. So they might do some goofy stuff like that, and then they might just kind of give it to Arch, and then Quinn will be the backup. But we'll see. We shall yeah, see. I mean, I've, I've seen videos of the kid. The kid's got a he's got a cannon, and he's got a flick of the wrist too. I mean, it's, it, it just he's he looks great, but I mean, he's like I said, it's still high school, and you know, and college is a big step. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, you really it's all hypotheticals at this point, but I mean. I I don't know. I mean, would you rather? Well, that, your opinion. Would you rather him go to Georgia? What would you What would you think about if him coming? I would rather him go. Like, like you have, know what? I would rather him go where he has the best opportunity to play. And to be completely honest, we know you and I. I love Kirby Smart. Hey, thanks, Coach, for that uh, for that national championship. But we know that um, Georgia is where five stars' college careers go to die. That's very true. I'll and so I, I would rather see him, and I, I don't see Kirby or Nick Saban being the kind of guys that are swayed, even though it's the Mannings, to be swayed to let these guys just play just because he's a Manning. But in Texas, plus that, and I think Texas, even despite how badly they performed over the last several years, still has probably more boosters in Alabama or Georgia. Maybe not combined, but on an individual one-on-one level. So yeah. – you know, well, there's... And, then, and it all comes down to the offensive line as well. I mean, like you'd be the greatest quarterback in the world if you don't have protection. Then I mean, don't that don't mean nothing. Like I mean, if you're running for your life, you know. And I don't even I don't know. I mean, that's that's my fault. I don't know how Texas offensive line is. I mean, if they, you know, I haven't uh, done my homework on that. But I mean, and that's another thing I I would think they would look at as well. You know. Um, yeah, I feel you. I mean, you know, he's looking at numbers, and you know, he's you know. He's got an arm. He's looking for the deep ball. I mean, Texas plays that kind of that game. We don't, you know. Obviously, that's another thing that may dissuade him from coming to Georgia because we run the ball, you know. So if he's looking for, you know, passing yards and you know that kind of stuff, you know, that would be kind of a deterrent. But I don't know. Yeah. Hey, I have to. I have to take a step back, Mr. Spencer. If you're still watching, I'm going to go ahead and retract my statement. Uh, Now that I've had a minute to think about it, and in recollection when we were talking early in the season, you're right. Uh, I didn't give Harbaugh a lot of credit, and I didn't think they were going to make as much noise as they did make. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you that credit, but you got to, you got to, you got to let me have my. Uh, you got to admit that Shay Shay was on point. That that one, that one's getting better. Uh, so having said that, we got to keep this thing moving. We're gonna try and keep it tight. So we're gonna try and uh, rapid fire these next couple of uh, categories. Like I said, we're experiencing technical difficulties, so I think we are limited this evening to one hour of broadcast, and we're kind of at the forty. Five minute mark almost <laughs> yeah we we kind of got up there quick I yeah mean, so uh let's go ahead and i i'm <laughs> going to go ahead and jump on the big news this one broke today uh uh, uh five star linebacker cj allen that's huge is commits to uga he is coming in in the 2023 class uh that is huge now we know that doesn't always necessarily mean anything because they could be flipped between now and next season but that is absolutely huge uh this kid is a baller He's got a motor, some quick stats on him. 
Uh, so far, so far, uh, 105 solo tackles, 265 total tackles. He's averaging 9.1 tackles a game, Oof. five sacks, uh, four interceptions, and three forced fumbles. Now, a kid that's making those kind of like those are those are Nicobe Dean kind of numbers right there over mm-hmm. a three year period. And this mm-hmm. is a high school kid coming in, and he's only going to get bigger and stronger with the weight training program. What you got on this? Yeah, no, I mean, like we talked before, you know, this is a huge pickup because, I mean, there's a huge shoes to fill with the Kobe gone and with, uh, you know, our, our our secondary, you know, losing the people that they have. So this kid, you know, that's a huge pickup. Maybe he can, uh, you know, kind of lessen the, lessen the blow of those guys leaving. I mean, from those stats alone, you know, you would think that, you know, granted it is high school, but I feel like once he gets once he gets in the, gets on the field and collegiate, you know, play, that he'll be a force to reckon with right off the jump, I think. I mean – Hopefully he stays with us or stays committed to Georgia. I mean, that's a huge pickup for us. Yeah. I mean, you know, the only way I can see him not staying committed is if, you know, they completely crap the bed this season, uh, which will lead into our next uh, segment. Thank you. Yes. Reload, reload, reload. You're absolutely right. Uh, You're right about that, Sean. Um, Then we also want to uh, talk about real quick before we get into this last topic, because I want to give it a little bit of time here. Uh, Cornerback A.J. Harris. He's a five-star, and he's also class of 2023. He also commits. Uh, this kid is um, he's a native of Barnesville, Georgia, and he will. those two will be joining in the class of 2023. Offensive tackle Bo Hewley from Fairborn, Gabriel Harris from Thomasville, uh, tight end Lawson Nucky from Norcross. Good Lord, we're going to be loaded at tight end, man. We already got yeah. three bomb tight ends. Uh yeah. Uh, let's see who else. Where did I say Lawrence, uh, tight end Lawrence Nucky from North Cross and defensive lineman Seven Cloud from Powder Springs, and those are all homegrown boys. So yeah, I, I, I like to keep this state, man. I like yeah, it. I like Kirby, Kirby keeps it in state. Yeah, the Kirby can't recruit. That narrative is done. It's just you know what you do with it when you get it, and uh, he showed us what he can do with it when he puts it all together last year. And I was so, happy with AJ, I was happy with that AJ pickup because I mean you got Keely Ringo, you got you know now he's got a tandem. On the other side, you know, I mean, if he if he starts, you know, AJ if he starts, uh, but it looks like they're trying to reload that defense, you know, trying to kind of lessen the blow of the people that you know those those guys that we we lost. You know, yeah, the, absolutely, the Kate. You are right. We do currently have the best tight end in college football. If there is another tight end as good, haven't seen him. Brock Bauer last year, true last year freshman season, killed it. Absolutely killed it. He got uh, snubbed for that award too, and I could not believe it. That kid, I don't know who who won that uh, the tight end the, the award, that, the tight end award. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, well, the you stats, know, that's not even close. Well, you know what though, I you can have all the awards because think about this: Herschel Walker was one of the greatest running backs in college football of co- the decade of the '80s in college football, and he did not win the Heisman Trophy the year they won the national championship. Remember, yep. he didn't win that till next year. So, yep, no, I agree with you. Yep, I yeah, know. so. We're going to go ahead and shout out our next two sponsors before we jump into our last segment of the evening. First of all, we want to thank in social in, in, in social envision so with remix the Peter Piper pig pepper pepper with peppers. Okay, envision social media giving you the the power to I cannot talk empower create and sustain your so social that, media brother. platform. You need some help with your social media platform. Get at them www.envision social media today thank you for being a sponsor keeping it moving on along here uh 1906 tees i don't know why it's not showing i'm looking at the thing over here there we go now it's showing up 1906 tees they also specialize in custom sports gear they can make it for you squareup.com backslash 1906 tees thank you both for being sponsors of this week in sec football all right, we've been talking about this all week. We talked about this uh, for the last couple of weeks. We know the schedule. We know it looks light. We know a lot of people are saying we could take a step back and we could potentially lose one, maybe two. Uh, most folks are projecting a ten win season. I'm, I'm ten. I'm at a minimum of ten. Although I'm thinking it's going to be more like eleven and one. Most folks are saying we're going to go ten and not make it back to the conference championship. We shall see. I'm going to ask you first. Who do you? Who is the opponent you most fear this season? 
to be honest, I mean, there's two. There's actually two, and I kind of agree with uh, Golden Blue, dude. But, uh, well, I think, I mean, first off, South Carolina. I think South Carolina is going to come up. I think we may have a little bit of trouble with them. And even, you know, you and I were talking about Kentucky. But, I mean, I'm, I'm more worried about South Carolina um, just for the simple fact I mean, I, I just, I just think we might have trouble with them. I mean, just, I think they're, they're coming up. They're not the South Carolina Bowl, and, um, but you know what we were talking about before that the Oregon game is, is going to be the litmus test, like Clemson was last year. You know, I kind of have a better feeling, but I, I am kind of concerned with South Carolina this year. Yeah, what about right. you? yeah, I, I do agree with you, Shane Beamer. Uh, Shane Beamer definitely picked up and came in and picked up and did exceptionally well for uh, someone uh, taking over a program that was in the condition it was in when he took it over. Uh, mm-hmm. and then he's also adding um, Spencer Rattler. Uh, so Spence, yeah. so Spencer, Spencer's getting a reboot. Um, one of the biggest things, I don't think Spencer Rattler was a bad quarterback. I do think that Lincoln Riley's, Lincoln Riley's strength is offense, and I think it's time for – I think it is time for OU, if Alex Grinch does not perform this season, for him to go on about his merry way. Their, their, their weakness was their defense. Oklahoma could not – Oklahoma was always playing for their life in just about every game because they couldn't get any ground on their opponents because their opponents were scoring just as easily as they were. So yeah. we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with him in South Carolina. I'm going to go with Sean, Mr. Spencer. This guy, but Sean Spencer made me a believer in his team, and I laughed when he told me. This is another team I laughed about. I was in the uh, too. The Kentucky Wildcats. Mark Stoops has uh, taken that team. They're not – that that school is not just a basketball school anymore. They are a – they're a legitimate contender in the East. They've been a legitimate contender in the East pretty much just about every year since Mark Stoops came into the program and he's got his quarterback coming back and he's got his running back coming back and he's got a couple of stud receivers coming back. So that is the team that I, I fear the most. I don't know. I'm, you know what I have to, I'm going to have to watch a few games and see how Georgia plays before I decide whether or not to reach out to miss the Wesley Gaines with another challenge. Because, uh, you know, we gave Wesley the Blues last year because that defense was holding people to like three points a game at that point, and nobody had scored a touchdown against yeah. the defense before we played them. So we shall see. That's the one that scares me the most behind that. I think, you know what, you mentioned Oregon. I got to be honest, every year the season opener is a pucker factor for me, uh, especially since they started scheduling the classics. Like last year we played Clemson. Right. This year we're playing Oregon, and Oregon did beat uh, that 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 team up north. Is Kate likes to refer, or down south or whatever? I don't. Michigan, Ohio, yeah, that team down south. Um, they did beat they did beat them early in the season. Now they don't have the same coach, and Dan Lanning is coming in, so it's it, it depends on what he brings to the table with them. But those yep. are the two games that those are the two games I'm most worried about. I, I feel like if we lose any two. This season, it will be against Oregon. Oh, I, oh, yes, I know we're favored by 17 points. Uh, well, I, I'm still learning the protocols, Kate. So, and I'm not, I don't, I'm not a Michigan fan, so I think I get a pass. I think I get a mulligan. But uh, Oregon, uh, I, I, it's always a pucker factor for me. Every season opener, I got I put on my lucky my lucky number eleven jersey. Oh yeah, with my I only wear my I only wear my number eleven jersey and my lucky UGA Chucks and my lucky Bulldog socks for the season opener. Every I was gonna say TMI, but I got lucky Georgia draw. Yeah, I got you. You got some. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Up close and personal, you know. <laughs> anyway, I was saying like. Well, you were saying ten wins, right? No less than ten wins. I I got that, but I'm gonna go out and live, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be really strong with this. I think we're gonna run the table. I mean, if, I, those, I, if those games that we mentioned, they may be close, but we're gonna come out with a W, and I think we are gonna run the table. Um, well, I've seen the schedule. I think we can run the table. It's just yeah. here's the difference. Here's the difference. Last year, the defense made it really easy for the offense to operate. Oh, they weren't. They like. They. I don't think. I don't think Georgia played from behind all season except for the conference championship. Well, I'm gonna tell this you this year. The huh? caveat, 
the I'm sorry to cut you off, but the caveat is I believe personally, I do believe that the offense has gotten better. I think Stetson over the offseason has gotten better. And I think the, the offense has kind of gotten, you know, kind of gelled and got a little more cohesive together. So, I mean, it was, remains to be seen. But I, I feel like, you know, Kirby's got them, you know, him saying that Stetson's not making those kind of mistakes he was making, you know, prior. You know, that's, that's that's uh, you know, a good sign. But, I mean, like yeah. said, we, you know, Well, that's anyway. good. That's good. But, like, I like to say, week in and week out, even if even in the comments on some of the other Let's Talk football shows, what it comes down to is when that whistle blows and it's pad on pad and everything is full oh, speed. Yeah. Cause it's easy to be a stud in practice. I, I I played, I played right up until high school. I played uh, with guys that were studs in practice. And when it came time to get on the field, I mean, even when we did, sometimes it's just jitters and being in front of people. We'd be out playing recess, and these dudes are juking people and the outrunning people and head fakes and body, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. And then you get them on the field in a real game, and they just I don't know what to do, coach. Hey, you, you and I both, man. We don't. I, if you like me, you don't feel comfortable until that clock is a zero, 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 zero. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> when done, then you can ah, breathe a sigh of relief. But I mean, any given Saturday at SEC, I mean, any any team could be any team on any Saturday, regardless yeah. of the, regardless Absolutely. of the, you know, the team it is. Absolutely, been- you are one hundred percent right, sir. Um, you know, we wow, we managed to, you know what? We managed to do a whole show and finish all of our topics in 56 minutes. So we got, and, and we're almost right up on it, and we're giving it to you a couple <laughs> minutes early. The two minute warning, ladies and gentlemen. And we were almost right at the two minute warning. This is our little segment. Each of the Let's Talk Football shows, family of shows, has a segment at the end where we just want to share a little something. Uh, whether it be something philosophical, something, you know, uh, whatever. Um, this week, uh, my two-minute warning, I'm sending a big shout-out to uh, my father. On uh, uh, As a belated Father's Day, I got an opportunity to talk with him. Um, he has been bedridden for many years uh, following an illness. Uh, but that man is because, is because of him that I have become the man that I am today. Uh, a lot of people had heroes growing up, sports figures, which we talk about a lot, sports figures, movie actors, singers, dancers, whatever. My pops was my hero. And my goal in life is the day that I close my eyes, if anybody has anything to say about me along the lines of me being half the man that my father was as a role model for me, then I can go, I can leave here happy. So pops, I love you. Mwah. I appreciate you. I wish you could see this now. Uh, he's not gone, y'all. He's still with us, but you know me. I, w- I wish you could see this now. Um, but uh, yeah, I love you, and that's all I got for my two minute warning, bro. That's yeah, uh, best uh, you know, prayer for your dad, man. And uh, that was awesome. Uh, I mean, I can I can definitely echo that sentiment. I mean, my dad is the world to me. You know, I mean, that was uh, you know, it just. It kind of hits different when you have kids of your own. And then, you know, I want to give a shout out to all the fathers in the, you know, in, in the world that are struggling. They're doing the best they can, you know, uh, uh, complete family or, or still married, divorced, what have you. Um, you know, I know it's tough, but as long as you're in that kid's life, you know, that's one thing I promised my son, I promised myself, no matter what happens, I will always be there regardless, you know, of what it is. You know, we, I'm divorced or whatever, but at the same point, I will always be in my kid's life. And uh, me growing up with my family, you know, we didn't have a lot, whole lot growing up. And, uh, you know, um, you know, my dad always found the time to go out in the yard, throw the baseball, do this, that, the other. He worked midnight. He used to work for CSX and he worked the graveyard shift. You know, I'd come mm-hmm. to school, you know, tired and that kind of stuff. He'd still find time to, you know, take me to baseball practice and actually coach teams and, you know, Little League and that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, I can echo your sentiment. I mean, that, and, you know, my, my dad is actually my hero. You know, what I mean, just thinking about it now, because I really, actually, you know, never really thought about it till you just said that. It's like I really didn't have a quote unquote hero, but I mean, yeah. Oh my goodness! Looks like we lost Colin. Um, I don't know exactly. There he is. He just made his way back. Here. Oh, there we go. I'm not weird. sure what happened, but uh, oh, welcome back. you made it back. This <laughs> time to hit the one minute mark. So. Anyway, Thank now, you guys for tuning in this week's edition of This Week in SEC Football. We made it through all the technical difficulties, Jay. We didn't have a whole lot of bells and whistles, but we made it through. Uh, we appreciate you on behalf of our sponsors, DJG Enterprises, 1906 Tees, Envision Social Media. We appreciate you. I have been Mr. Fingers, 
And that is the brother from another, the sexy mother Hubbard, the ace of base in the place in your face, Colin P from the DMV. I got yeah, it yeah. all in. We will be <laughs> back. We will be back next week, next Monday. We're calling it. We're not postponing next week. Next week on Monday, we will yeah. be on this week in SEC football. And we will see you later. Go dogs. Go dogs.